Got another great panfish subsurface fly for you this week. This is called the humbug. There's really not much to this fly. There's two different colors, chenille that make up the body and some rubber legs, very typical of a lot of panfish flies. But the interesting thing about this is it the one color chenille is run down the back of the lighter color and it gives it a nice contrast uh, because in this particular fly, the yellow and the black contrast very well. This fly shows up very, very well underwater. The longer rubber legs, just bring it to life. What's a panfish fly without rubber legs? You can tie these up with weight all along the hook shank if you want, or you can tie them without weight along the hook shank. Just depends on what your fishing needs are. So that's the humbug, and we'll go ahead and get started. Start the humbug by putting our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 3906B in a size 10. It's a heavier wire hook, which is very good since this is a subsurface fly, it helps it sink better. We'll go ahead and debarb the hook. For thread, I'm using a Vivas 6 aught in black. I'll attach the thread right behind the eye of the hook and I'll run the thread down the hook shank, putting in a base layer of thread, and I'll end right at the hook shank, just about the barb of the hook. Body material, this is made from a medium rayon chenille. I'm using two different colors. There's a black medium rayon chenille, and then there's a yellow medium rayon chenille. The first piece that will tie in is the black rayon chenille. I'll want to remove some of the fluff on the end to expose the core of the chenille, and I'll tie that in right at the end of the shank. I'll actually wrap this in going down the bend of the hook just a little bit. This extends the body just a little bit more. I will then take some yellow chenille, removing some of the fluff on the end to expose the core. I will tie that in on the hook shank. If your thread is twisted a little bit and wants to jump around on the hook shank, Give it a counterclockwise spin, and that will cause it to jump back towards the back of the hook, which will make tying in material a little bit easier. You want to go ahead and secure that along the hook shank and wrap it all the way down the hook shank as far as you wrapped in the black chenille. Securing the yellow chenille in will advance our thread forward towards the eye of the hook. We'll want to stop one third the length of the hook shank behind the eye of the hook. That's as far as the yellow chenille body will go. You may need to twist the chenille a little bit if it's got any flat spots. You can rub your scissors on the top and the bottom to just fluff that out a little bit so when you're palmering this forward, you have a nice, even body. Your first wrap of yellow chenille will be right at the end of the hook shank. It's going to be over just a little bit down the bend of the hook, but as I said, as you'll see in a moment, when you pull the black chenille over the back of it, it tends to pull that chenille forward. Once you reach your thread, secure the yellow chenille and trim away the excess. Make certain your thread is right at the end of the yellow chenille. Take your black chenille. If you need to, you can twist that up and stroke it to, to fluff out the fibers a little bit. But you're going to pull the black chenille forward and notice how it kind of pulls the back of the, the butt end of the fly just a little bit forward. 
you're going to tie that in right in front of all of the yellow chenille. Once you have that secured in, wrap your thread forward to about a half an eye length away from the eye of the hook, lashing down that black chenille. Then fold over the black chenille and wrap your thread on top of the black chenille all the way back to the yellow chenille body. This will prepare the black chenille for wrapping around and making the head of the fly. Using some round rubber legs, these are a medium white round rubber legs for this fly. I've already pre-cut these to about two and a half inches. I need four round rubber legs, but I want to keep the legs together so that I have two of them that are together for each side of the fly. Where the midpoint of the rubber legs is, you're going to lash that down along the side of the hook shank of the fly. And notice that I'm still right in front of the yellow chenille body. And then I'll do the same for the other set of legs on the other side of the fly. After you have a few wraps in, you can position them, making certain that they're right on the side. And then you're going to go ahead and wrap forward, wrapping those legs down. You want to wrap to about a half an eye length behind the eye. You don't want to crowd the eye. And then you're going to wrap back to where you tied those in and the black chenille right up against the yellow chenille body. By wrapping the thread back and jamming against the yellow chenille body, it's going to cause the round rubber legs to stick out at more of a 45 degree angle from the body. Then you'll take the front of one set of legs and you'll fold it back. You're going to stretch the legs as, you, as you're folding them. You're going to pull that back and stretch it to thin it out. And you're going to lash it down along the side of the hook shank. And then you'll repeat the process, again stretching those out and lashing those legs down on the side of the head space for the fly. They may overlap the other ones, but they also might go out at an angle. That's fine. We can adjust those a little bit later. You want to tidy this up by wrapping down a little bit of chenille if it's sticking out and or uh, the rubber legs. You don't have to cover this all up perfect. What we're mostly doing is giving ourselves a nice, level, smooth area for wrapping the chenille in. Take your black chenille, start palmering it around, covering up all those thread wraps from the legs forward to the eye of the hook. Now, you'll want to get the chenille right up by the eye of the hook, but you don't want to go over and crowd it. Secure the chenille in just behind the eye of the hook, and then we'll trim away the excess black chenille. With the chenille trimmed away, we'll stroke those fibers back and we'll put a few wraps in right behind the eye of the hook, just, and then just make a real small head to the fly. Put in a four or five turn whip finish to secure the thread and trim away our thread. We don't need to make or want to make a, a large head on this fly. You just want enough to secure the, the chenille in and give it a nice taper away from the eye of the hook. If you have some of the thread or chenille that went over the eye of the hook or into the eye a little bit, that's fine. Your tippet will still get in the eye. Uh, and it'll still fish just fine. I like to trim the legs about a half a shank length behind the bend of the hook. But before I trim those legs, I actually want to separate them. 
simply because it's easier to separate them when they're long right now than it is when they're a little bit shorter. You can pop the ends of the round rubber and the ends will split apart and then it's easy to separate each one of them. Once you get all of those separated, collect them behind the fly and trim them to about a half a shank length behind the bend of the hook. If you like them shorter, by all means, cut them a little shorter. If you want them longer, keep them longer. At this point, as you can see, you can pull on the rubber legs a little bit to kind of separate all of them so that they're all not clumped together on the sides, but they actually splay out a little bit. Put some head cement on all the thread wraps in the head. That will help protect it from the little teeth that panfish have. If needed, you can use your bodkin to clean out any glue in the eye or potentially clear out any materials that got into the eye of the hook. And that's the humbug. As you can see, a very, very basic, simple fly. This particular version is not weighted. With a heavier wire hook, this will sink anywhere from six to seven inches down below the surface. If you want to use this when fish are deeper, by all means put a dozen or so, 15 wraps of lead along the hook shank, whatever you need to get that down deeper. You can experiment a little bit with this and change up the yellow chenille. I would keep the black because that's a nice contrast, unless you wanted to go with something like say a red and blue chenille combination which has a nice contrast. One, one is a negative of the other. Change up the round rubber legs, maybe put some silly legs in. You know, do some different things to this fly. You can change up this fly very easily to meet any of your fishing needs. That's the humbug. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.